Hey everyone, I want to give you another update about the little startup I'm building. As a reminder, I'm building smartdiary.co, which is a journaling app with AI integration. And I'm building this myself with Next.js and the OpenAI ChatGPT API. And since the first video, I've added quite a lot of new cool features and I want to walk you through them quickly. First, as you can already see, I added an option to upload cover images for diary entries. They are optional, but I think they make the diary look much more friendlier. And it's nice to look back and see images from a particular day. I uploaded these cover images to Amazon S3. There are other options for file upload. Even Vazel has their own file upload service now, but I think S3 is still the cheapest option available. That's why I went with it. I think you will pay around 2 cents per gigabyte per month for the data you store on S3. So this is a lot of images. The cost is almost completely negligible. Now, setting this up for the very first time was not easy, to be honest. The Amazon S3 documentation is quite difficult, but the actual code I had to write was not difficult. Just the documentation sucks, and especially the authentication part. However, what is even cooler than these image uploads is that I added a vector database to my project. As a reminder, we can use the AI chat to ask ChatGPT questions about our past diary entries. And for this, I pass the diary entries to ChatGPT so it knows about them and can answer questions based on what you have written in the past. For example, I can ask the AI, when did I last visit my parents? And it answers the question based on my past diary entries. Now the problem is we can only pass a limited amount of text to the ChatGPT API. If we have only 30 diary entries, then this might work. But what if we have 5000 diary entries? We can't pass all of them to ChatGPT, there's just not enough context window. And also the more text we pass to a ChatGPT, the more we have to pay. Because the costs for a text generation depends on the total amount of text that you pass to it, plus the text that's generated. So we need a way to first find the relevant diary entries in our database before we send them to ChatGPT. But how do we find them if we have a ton of entries? The tricky part is that we have to find the correct entries by their meaning, because whatever we wrote in these entries has to fit to the question that we just sent in the text, right? And this is where vector embeddings come into play. Vector embeddings are described in the OpenAI documentation and it's basically a technique where you take a text, like a query or a whole diary entry, and you turn it into an array of numbers, as you can see here. But this array of numbers doesn't only contain four numbers, it contains hundreds or even over a thousand of these numbers. These numbers are also called dimensions because you're basically creating a point in a space with many, many dimensions. And the cool thing is that in these numbers here, we can embed the meaning of our text. So to give you an example, let's say I write in my diary entry, I ate ice cream on Sunday. Then I can turn this text into such a vector. And then I take another text, a query, for example, what did I eat on Sunday and turn this into a vector as well. Now, since these two texts are very similar, the vector embedding we created will also be very similar. So these numbers will be close to each other. The generated point in this multidimensional array is close to each other. So just to illustrate this quickly with my amazing MS Paint skills, let's say we have this space with a lot of dimensions. Now, this actually only has two dimensions, the X and the Y axis, right? Don't worry, this will not get much more complicated. But now imagine instead of two dimensions, we had like 1,500 dimensions. We can't actually imagine this in our head, but in math, this is possible. But for illustration, we can also just look at two dimensions to understand this. So let's say we have our first query and we turn it into a vector, which gets a point in this many dimensional space. So the first point is our journal entry where we wrote, I ate ice cream on Sunday. So it gets a point in the space. And then we write our query, what did I eat on Sunday? And since both of these texts contain a form of eating and the word Sunday, they will have vectors that are very close to each other. Now, if we talk about something completely different, 
like for example subscribe to coding and flow, if we turn this into a vector embedding, the meaning is very different from these two texts, so it will be further away from these points. And this is the whole idea behind vector embeddings, and this is a new technique that we can now do in this form because of AI and large language models. Now we can use the OpenAI API to create these vector embeddings. So we just send a request there and we get this vector back. This is what I'm doing in my code. And then we also have to store these vectors somewhere. For this you need a vector database. There are many of them available now, but the very popular one is Pinecone, which I'm using right now. And it also has a free tier, which is enough for one project. And here you can see another illustration of this multidimensional vector space I was talking about. So in my code, when I create a new diary entry, I also create such a vector embedding by sending a request to ChatGPT. Then when I store the new entry in MongoDB, I also store this vector in Pinecone. So this down here is Pinecone code. So Pinecone alone is not enough to store all your data. It's really only meant for vector embeddings. I still store the full diary entries in MongoDB. And as you can see, I'm executing all of this inside a MongoDB transaction so that if one of these operations fail, the whole operation is rolled back. So if the Pinecone request fails, we don't store the journal entry in MongoDB either. Instead, I show an error message to the user because something went wrong and I don't want to have journal entries without the corresponding vector embeddings in Pinecone. When I update or delete a journal entry, I also modify the vector embedding in Pinecone so they are always in sync. Then when the user sends a new chat message to the AI, I take the last few messages in the chat and also turn them into a vector embedding because they are basically the query that we want to search for. Again, this could contain what did I eat on Sunday and then we do this query on our Pinecone database to find the journal entries that are very related to this query. And this top K value here means how many results we want to return. So at the moment I return the 30 most fitting diary entries that have a meaning as close as possible to our chat history. You can also take a smaller value and by the way, I'm currently preparing a newer tutorial for YouTube where we will use the same stack, MongoDB, Pinecone, Next.js to build a very similar app. There we will build a note-taking app where we have our own AI chatbot that knows about all our notes. So stay tuned on this channel, subscribe if you haven't yet. This is a new tutorial that will be out very soon. Yeah, and then I also filter to make sure that I only get the entries for this particular user. And then we fetch the same 30 journal entries from our MongoDB database. And then we simply pass them to the ChatGPT prompt. So now ChatGPT always has the 30 most relevant journal entries for any question. And it doesn't matter if we have 30 entries or 30,000, it will always work the same. And this allows us to find information that's deeply buried inside our diary, which is really cool. For example, I ask it to summarize the week I spent at my parents' house recently. And then it summarizes all that I have done on this date. And imagine doing this like three years after you wrote the entries. You can go back to any date and ask questions. What have I done on this date? You can also ask it to summarize experiences that you have. And I think this is very valuable, especially over a long time frame, because no one really has time to dig through their old diary entries, right? Especially if you have hundreds or thousands of them. But this completely changes the game in my opinion. Now you might have noticed that response streaming isn't enabled yet, so we always have to wait until the full AI answer is generated. We don't get this nice flowing text effect that we have in the ChatGPT web interface. This is because I'm using server actions here and streaming isn't supported in server actions, at least not yet. I don't know if it will work in the future, but I don't want to migrate my code away from server actions right now, so I just don't implement streaming for now. However, in the tutorial I'm preparing for YouTube, we will implement streaming, so you will see how this works. Now there are even more cool features I've implemented like email reminders and a premium subscription, but I don't want to make this video too long, so I will talk about this in another video very soon. Please leave a like if you enjoy these side project update videos. Again, I will make a tutorial with this exact stack very soon. There you will learn about vector embeddings and all the stuff and how it works. 
And please try out smartdiary.co. The app is free to use. And yeah, you get your own AI chatbot. And if this isn't cool, I don't know what is. All right, see you soon. Happy coding. Take care.